So about a year ago, I made this cute cat bed that my cat wasn't that into, and the whole world told me to make a great lampshade. Cool, cool. But what fun is it to make something I know is going to look good when I can make something that might be ugly instead? Welcome to my channel, friends. Last year, I used a beach ball to make the cat bed, which was a great idea. Good job past me. Present me decided to save some money and use a balloon instead. We'll come back to that. I taped a bunch of fiber rush to the balloon, wrapping it around pretty haphazardly. My goal here was to get enough on the balloon so that I didn't have to tape it anymore and could just weave the new pieces through. I got to that point pretty quickly, plus I'd started with some really big pieces of tape, so I thought it'd be a good idea to take the tape off while I could still reach it. So then I tried again, vowing not to take the tape off until I had enough of a structure that I could do without the balloon. If anyone is wondering, a 7 inch diameter sphere is much easier to cover in fiber rush than a 24 inch diameter sphere. I did take the tape off once I had enough of a structure that I didn't need the balloon anymore. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but it was probably unnecessary since it'll all be covered by other parts of the light later. I should clarify, taking the tape off was unimportant, taking the balloon out was crucial. I grabbed some Mod Podge, which yes, I am mispronouncing, but Mod Podge does not sound right and I will die on this very wrong hill. Anyway, I covered the top half of the fiber rush and then waited for it to dry. I had grand plans to cover the other half once the top half dried, but I ended up liking the workability of having it soft, so I never did. Also, I feel the need to mention that this video wasn't sponsored by SawStop, although they did send me that nice shirt after I chopped off my thumb and bought a SawStop. Apparently, all you need to do to get a free shirt is be a YouTuber and have a dramatic table saw accident. Five stars, highly recommended. Then I weaved this six light cord I found on Amazon into the center of the ball, sticking the lights through the fiber rush. I was trying to place them evenly, but given how it looked when I was done, I did a terrible job. Then I went to work with the dowel rods. I'd purchased 20 48 inch poplar dowels from Menards, and my plan was to cut them down and stick them through the center of the ball. I put the first dowel in and things were great. The second rod, still good. Rod 10 or so, I realized this thing was hideous and nothing I could do would save it. It's because the ball is too big, I told myself. I'll use a smaller balloon. That'll make it better. So I did all that again. Theoretically, it was better. I got more rods in at least. But it was still ugly and it was getting really difficult to insert more dowels because I was running out of space inside the ball. So I gave up. Like straight up walked out and left the dumb thing hanging from the air filter for two days. And then, while moping in sadness over my project fail, I had an epiphany. Instead of having a hollow space in the center, what if I used something that could hold the sticks instead? Like styrofoam. So attempt three went a little differently. I started by embedding the lights in the styrofoam, wrapping the cord around the ball as I went. I really only had one chance at this, so you'd think I would have planned it carefully. I mean, I planned it a little, but mostly I just stabbed a bunch of holes everywhere and hoped for the best. There was this annoying socket at the end of the line of lights, which was fine when I was hiding the whole thing in a hollow ball, but a lot more troublesome when the lights were on the outside. So I chopped it off and stuck each wire line into a wire nut, which I then embedded into the styrofoam. This seems about as code compliant as I can imagine, but I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments how it's not. Do these projects at your own risk, y'all. Then, for the third time, I wrapped a bunch of fiber rush around a ball. It was just as exciting as the first two times. This time, though, I skipped the Mod Podge at the end since I wasn't removing the ball and I didn't need the fiber rush to hold the shape on its own. This was a good choice. Like, finally, I made a good choice since the soft strands could be moved around when I was inserting dowels later. I also opted to fancify the cord with some macrame, since apparently, this time, I was more confident this project was actually going to work. I tried to demo it slowly, but you're basically tying really simple knots around the cord. The key is to keep the strings coming from the same direction and tie each knot the exact same way. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing ear protection while I tie fancy knots, they're actually really nice ear protection headphones. This isn't a plug, I just love them, and I'm willing to look ridiculous in all of my videos so I can listen to podcasts and whatnot while I work. There's a link in the description if you want your own. Then I reprepped the dowels. Since they weren't going to go all the way through the ball anymore, I cut them down into 12 inch pieces. I also sharpened one of the ends to make it easier to stick into the styrofoam. 
And then it was stick stabbing time. So I stabbed in some sticks. Not much to say here. I didn't start with glue, but the more sticks I put in, the more I decided that yes, I should use glue. So I started dipping the dowels in wood glue before inserting them into the styrofoam. And then I ran out of sticks. I looked at the light and was like, hmm, yes, this could use more sticks. So I went to Menards and bought 11 more dowels because that was how many they had. And that seemed like plenty. Then I came back home and did all that dowel prep again. And this seems like an appropriate time to thank the MVT of the project, my pencil sharpener. Faced with unique circumstances, she really sharpened up and saved the day. Hit the like button below in her honor, or maybe just because these videos take a ton of work to make and it helped me out a lot. More stick stabbing happened. It was grand. And then I ran out of sticks. This looks good, I thought, but you know what would make it even better? More sticks. So I went back to Menards, a different Menards. In fact, this was my third Menards because the first two were straight up out of quarter inch dowels at this point. If you live in the Twin Cities and you were hoping to buy quarter inch dowels in June, I'm sorry. I bought 16 more dowels. That was all the light colored ones they had. And while I was pretty indiscriminate in the beginning, I realized at this point that the more I was able to avoid the darker green tinted dowels, the better this was going to look. Plus, 16 seemed like enough, maybe even too many. More sharpening, more stabbing, more Menards, over and over and over again, because apparently I am incapable of judging how many more sticks I need. And then, finally, I decided I had enough dowels. 20 plus 16 plus 11 plus 16 plus 20 gets me 83 dowels, costing a total of $70. The fiber rush was another $20, plus $35 for the cord of lights, and $24 for the bigger light bulbs for the corded lights. Oh. And the styrofoam ball was like three bucks. So, $152. Was it worth it? Here's a nice picture of it hung. Here's another nice picture of it hung. And here's a nice picture of it hung with the lights turned on. Yes, that's right, folks. After all of this, only one of the six lights actually turned on. Plot twist. I have no way to fix this. Like, I did a ton of testing and something's wrong with the cord itself. This is what I get for not testing the cord at the beginning of the project. Rookie mistake. So I'm done. Just totally defeated. I don't get defeated by projects very often, but this was just one step too far. Like, what even are my options here? Take out the sticks and start over? Prepping the sticks was the most time consuming part, so that probably wouldn't be too bad. I keep thinking that there might be a way to replace the light sockets, like cut them out, pull the cord out of the styrofoam, put a new set in instead. But then the cord connecting the light still has to go on top of the fiber rush, which really just isn't going to look good. Maybe there's a way to do it with six different lights that aren't all on one cord. If I had it like that, then I could weave the cord under the fiber rush. I don't know. But if I figure it out, I'll talk about it when I do a reveal video of this little dining area, so make sure you hit subscribe if you want to find out. In the meantime, go take a look at the cat bed that inspired this project. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.